family fortunes with the Brown family from Airdrie, Bob, Rena, Bobby, Ann and John. And from Rockford, the Ladd family, Brendan, Christine, Alan, Edna and Francis, all here to play Family Fortunes. And among tonight's hidden prizes are a 44 piece silver plated canteen of cutlery, an automatic 12 plate dishwasher, a presentation clock, a radio cassette unit plus speakers, and a weekend break for two from a choice of 200 hotels in Great Britain. And here is your host, Bob Monkhouse. Oh, what a lovely welcome. You know, I was, in fact, I was talking to our producer just now before the show. We draw lots to see who talked to the producer, and I lost. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, Bob, how do you start to make an audience laugh? He might have said, when? I don't think I know. I think he said, how? I'm sure, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. And I told him, when you start, he said, I started out as a kid wanting to be a comedian. So I used to go home to my family, and after dinner, I'd tell the family jokes. I'd tell them jokes, 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 for about an hour. But after a while, my father started staying out, and my grandparents started getting heavily into euthanasia. <laughs> my mother was a tough audience. Oh, you try telling jokes to a woman who's standing on a window ledge going, no more, no more. <laughs> and all the neighbors yeah. down there going, jump, jump. <laughs> so didn't like it. <laughs> ah. I was lucky. I made my big breakthrough after that. I discovered the special ingredients that are going to make me a showbiz great. Ah, yes. All you need is ten contestants to do the thinking for you, a computer to do the talking for you, hidden prizes, cash prizes, a jackpot of fifteen hundred pounds, and you're a star. Bob Jerome. <laughs> Don't they look good? Brendan, yeah, where have you come from? Romford in Essex. Romford, very nice. Oh, your support. Oh. <laughs> You've brought your supporters club with you, have you? What do you do down there in Romford? Um, I'm a police officer. Is he still popular? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all your parolees out there. <laughs> Oh, do you find, I mean, you don't seem at all nervous now. Are you nervous when you stand up in court and give evidence? I used to be, but after a while, you tend to get used to it. <laughs> Brendan, introduce your family before I get nervous. Yes, this is my wife, Christine. So it is. And my father, Alan. Hello, Alan. And my mother-in-law, Edna. Massing. And my sister, Frances. Lovely to see you. It is indeed. <clears throat> what do you do for a hobby? I like to read and do keep fit. Oh, really? I do a lot of reading, not much keep fit. <laughs> I went in our library last week, took out a thriller. She hadn't got much conversation, but who cared? <laughs> <laughs> Alan... Alan Ladd? <laughs> Good Lord, a great film star reduced to this. Yes. Oh. From Hollywood to Borehamwood. I like it. <laughs> Good, that's a good line. Well said, Alan. Alan Ladd. Still standing on the box. <laughs> <laughs> Edna, lovely to see you. Welcome to the show. Edna Ladd? No, Edna Wastel. I didn't think you looked like one of the lads. And <laughs> Francis, what do you do? Uh, telephone sales. Telephone sales. I used to know a girl who did telephone sales. She was cheaper after six o'clock. <laughs> Here's the Brown family. So where do you come from, Bob? Uh, I come from Airdrie, uh, Scotland. Airdrie, aye. What do you do up there? I'm a postman. Are oh, you really? Oh, you should be proud. Did you see that in the paper that uh, last year the post office had no complaints whatsoever from the public? Exactly. That's right. <laughs> Apparently all the angry letters were delivered to the wrong address. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do. I'm sure you do a great job and I'm sure everybody on your, on your delivery rounds is cheering for you now, as indeed your family must be. Bob, would you introduce us to them? Yes. This is my wife, uh, Rina. Hello, Rina. My son, Bobby. Nice to see you. Daughter-in-law, Anne. I am. And nephew, John. Very good to see you. What's it like being married to a postman? Do you like it? Yes, it's quite nice, Bob. You have to be up early, don't you? <laughs> Not really. Oh, really? He does? Yes. Is he a first-class male or a second-class male? <laughs> first class. <laughs> oh, hesitation there. Uh, you keep franking him. Bobby, what's your business? Uh, I'm in car sales. In car sales? Yes. You got your own car? Uh-huh. Ah. Yes. Tell me something. Which is more important to you, your car or your wife? <laughs> I can give you three seconds on this. <laughs> I'll pass. Oh, and 
What do you think he really thinks? <laughs> me, of course. You, of course, I should hope so. Some men think more of their cars than they do of their wives. Show me the man who'll take his wife out on a Sunday morning and wash her down with warm soapy water. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the wife will let him. John, what do you do? Police officer as well. Officer as well. Police officer as well. Yes, <laughs> Pair of knickers here. <laughs> oh dear, I'm thinking. Let's play family fortune. How do you come, Brendan? Here's Bobby. Well, when I read this question, you'll see it at the bottom of the screen. For the benefit of those who can't hear my voice, we have 100 people surveyed. The top six answers on the board. Hit the button when you're sure you have an answer. Name an occupation whose members seem to have no sense of fun. <coughs> Name it, Brandon. Inland Revenue Collectors. The Inland Revenue. Well, the Inland Revenue man must have a sense of humour, because when you get his bill, you think, you must be joking. <laughs> the Inland Revenue Inspector. <laughs> yes, the tax man, 22. Nobody move, nobody move. Second most popular answer. Got you hand-cut crystal decanter, six tumblers, and a silver-plated tray. Oh, that's nice. Look at this, Bob. In our survey, there's a different occupation whose members seem to have no sense of fun that came top of the survey. Can you tell me what it is? An undertaker. An undertaker. <laughs> I don't like undertakers. All they want is my body. <laughs> if it's more popular, than tax man, you and the Brown family will have control of the board and decide whether to play or pass. A grave undertaking. Oh, wow, yes, play or pass. Play, play. play. right, we got it. Lena, right here, darling, yes. <laughs> Name an occupation whose members seem to have no sense of fun. A dentist. A dentist, they seem pretty grim to you. They yes. are down in the mouth, after all. Dentist! <laughs> Up there, oh, Bobby, any ideas? Civil servant. Civil servant, you find them a grim lot, do you? All right. <laughs> A cell servants. Oh, two lives lost over here. Lad family, hope you're conferring to come up with an answer we haven't thought of over this side. Anne. Policeman. A policeman? Oh, John. That's not true. Not true. That's not true, is it, no, John? You have a sense of fun, haven't you? Certainly. Why don't you nicker after the show? <laughs> over here, the Browns would like to see a policeman. They don't. You know better than that, don't you, Brendan? You've got a sense of fun. What's your answer? Uh, a debt collector. A debt collector. If debt collector is one of the missing answers, you've got the 63 pounds. If not, the 63 goes to the Brown family. A debt collector? <laughs> no, it's not there. It's your money box. Well, what else could it be? Any ideas? Who's got no sense of fun, folks? A grave digger. Good one, Edna. Yeah, we got a grave digger. And, a, and your, your MP, the Prime Minister. All right, let's see what we got. In our survey, the sixth most popular answer was... <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. Number five. A lawyer. Number four. A grave digger. You're right. My goodness me. Look at that. And number three. Ah. Oh. I tell you... I don't entirely agree with that list. I know an undertaker with a sense of humour. Went round to this lady's house, knocked on the door. She came to the door. He said, are you the Widow Maloney? She said, I'm Mrs Maloney. I'm not the Widow Maloney. He said, wait till you see what I've got in the box. Well, <laughs> round two. Christine here's Rena. 100 people surveyed. Top six answers on the board. You've got to find six answers. Hit the button when you're sure you have an answer. Something you keep near you when watching TV. Chocolates. Do you? You don't look as if you do. You're very trim. However, Christine gets away with keeping the chockies near her. And there they are, the six most popular answer. But no conferring. No conferring by other family. Will you give me a more popular answer, Rena? My purse. Your purse? Yes. You don't trust anybody in your house. <laughs> I would like to have my purse beside me. You like to have your purse beside yes. you? That's a wee Airdrie lass speaking to me, isn't it? I don't want letters, by the way, to the Sunday Post about that. I'm just uh, saying that Scottish lasses are wise and careful. Your purse! Up there, would you play or pass? Play. Play, say the lad family, and they have the right to do so. Alan, name something you keep near you when watching TV. Some cans of beer. Some cans of beer. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're with the police too, aren't you? But you don't walk the beat anymore. No, so you can afford right. to drink a little beer. Yes. <laughs> Edna. The newspapers. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if the newspapers are up there. <laughs> yes! Only the top answer. Edna. 
But coming up is such a smoking answer, my darling. You've got yourself a stereo car radio with a cassette player and speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look into my eyes, darling. <laughs> Tell me, what do you keep by you when you're watching TV, and why isn't it me? I keep the little thing that changes the channel so I don't have to get up and turn it over. <laughs> Francis here would like to see on the board the little thing that changes the channel so she doesn't get up and get it. <laughs> oh, yes! That's what it is. That's what it is. Well, you've got the, uh, the car radio. You've got a, a radio cassette unit and speakers. Yeah, beautiful one. Cigarettes. Oh. Yes, a diminishing number of smokers have their cig... Oh, yes, 13 people. <laughs> Out of 100. Out of 10 years ago, 90 out of 100 would have said cigarettes. All we need is the missing answer, Christine. Knitting. Knitting. If knitting is the missing answer, you'll have the value of that correct answer, the second most popular, plus the 62 pounds in the bank. If it isn't there, you'll lose your first life in this round. Knitting. <coughs> it's not there. Ooh, 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 ooh Alan. The wife. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't let her out of your sight. <laughs> Over there, Rena's got a purse, you've got your wife. If there's spouse there, then uh, you've got the value of a correct answer, plus the 62 pounds of the bank. If not, you lose your second life. Your husband or wife? <coughs> not there. Edna, got another idea for us. TV Times. The TV Times. <laughs> if TV Times is the missing answer, you've got all the money. If it isn't there, you lose your third life. A chance to steal goes to the Browns. Edna here desperately wants to see the TV Times. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they love you. Well done, darling. And another gift for you, a presentation clock. Oh, a lovely you. presentation clock for her. I think she will love that. <laughs> Our TV is always going wrong. The repairman came round. He said, you're watching too much sport. I said, how do you know? He said, one of the legs on your set has got cartilage trouble. <laughs> <laughs> 